Okay, let's analyze a home run or a possible home run. Let's see how far it went. We've got a baseball player who hits a ball three feet off the ground with an initial velocity of 150 feet per second and a launch angle of 45 degrees. We want to determine how far the ball will travel. Okay. So we've got our initial velocity, V0, 150 feet per second. We've got theta being 45 degrees. And we've got H0 being 3. Okay, so how far will the ball travel? Okay. Well, we need to figure out the two components. Okay. So if we draw here, we've got the home run, or the ball being hit, until it comes down. Now this is the X component. We want, that's what we want to find. We want to find out how far it traveled this way. Well, the formula is x equals the initial velocity, which we have, cosine theta, which we have, and the time. Problem is, we don't have the time. We don't know how long it's going to take to get to here. So we got to find that first. The y component is how high it is in the air. And so the formula for that is negative 16 t squared plus v0 sine theta t plus h0. And we know most of this. We know that when the ball lands, we're looking for the time it takes to get to here. Well, the height would be zero. We're solving for t. We know the initial velocity was 150. Sine 45 degrees t plus 3. Now, we can calculate this part here. 150 times sine of 45 is about 106.1. So we've got 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 106.1t plus 3. Now, we've got to solve this for t. Okay, so we would use the quadratic formula. Now in my classes, I just give them a spreadsheet or they have an app on their phone or uh, a program on their calculator to do this quickly because our main goal is not in trying to spend time solving quadratic equations, it's to analyze the trig. So uh, we're just gonna put the A negative 16, the B 106.1, and the three for the C into our uh, spreadsheet. And we get two times. One is about 6.7 seconds. The other is about negative 0.03 seconds. And since we're dealing with time, the negative doesn't matter. So what we know now is in this situation, the ball will be in the air for 6.7 seconds. And now that we have that time, we can come back up here to our x, which is what we wanted, and solve for that. Our initial velocity is 150, cosine of 45 degrees, and now we know our time is about 6.7 seconds. And if we calculate that all out, 150 times cosine of 45 times 6.7, whoo! we see that this ball would have traveled 710.6 feet. So I uh, just randomly made up the numbers. Probably should have thought of it a little bit clearer because not too many baseball players are going to hit a ball 710 feet. Um, the farthest one that most people know is uh, a Mickey Mantle home run was estimated between 
oh, 550 and 600 feet. A couple balls and home run derbies have been hit 500 feet, but 710 feet realistically is probably uh, not too accurate. Uh, unless we're, maybe we're playing on the moon or way up high in the mountains where the air is, is really thin.